Imagine working the graveyard shift and suddenly witnessing something as horrific as police officers being shot. Karam Kaud is a cab driver in Riverside. He was at the intersection of Magnolia and Arlington on February 7th when he saw a gunman open fire on a police cruiser. The gunman reportedly Christopher Dorner. Karam is being called a hero for what he did next to try and help those officers. I mean, I'm sure, uh, Karam, first of all, welcome to the Thank show. You for really appreciate in. your being here. I, I'm certain you. that on the night shift, the graveyard shift, you see a lot of things, but nothing I would imagine could prepare you for this. Uh, I don't know from where to start. You want me to say the story? Or yeah, tell us, tell us tell what, us what happened. happened. Yeah, I was driving uh, through the downtown Riverside, coming from the uh, Tyler area mm -hmm. or from medicine area mm -hmm. and I was a second line the shooter parked next to me and at the opposite side the officer was at the, at the second line and there is a car next to him at left side at the side where the the cars go toward the, the left side or the left area and the shooter run the run the red light and because i wasn't paying attention to the traffic light i want to follow him but i realized it's a red, red light. light yeah mm -hmm. so i stopped and i want to complete what i'm doing playing with my phone i believe or with my radio and i realized there is a police officer there and i said how come he run the red light he gonna get big ticket he he cross he cut all these thinking and start to shoot when he reached almost next to the police officer. Just between them, the other bus, the other car, he shot for one time, moved a little bit, shot for second time. Every time around like 10 to 10 bullet maybe. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and at this point, you're behind him in your vehicle? Yeah, he, he was in my same line now, but not behind him. Behind him, like maybe 40 feet, uh -huh. 50 feet. Well, this had to be really shocking for, for you to see when you, you saw that. What did you do? What were you thinking? I was at a paintball, like the movie Eight Mile, when Eminem and his friend was shooting the cub with his paint. This is what I was thinking. It, like it's, it's like a, a Hollywood movie, movie but this, yeah. this was real. This was happening. He, yeah, this is what I, and there is, yeah, maybe someone will shoot a regular civilian, but not a, sh a police officer. What did you do at that point? At that point, until now, I haven't realized it's a real gun and real shooting. And yeah, after surreal. two seconds, he left the car next to the police officer. He left, and I, in my, I was thinking the police officer going to follow the shooter, but and instead of following him, his car started to come toward me because he had no control. It was out I of believe. control. He's, yeah. he's out of control. When he reached to the middle of the intersection, I, uh, I, f I realized the crash window for the passenger and the passenger sitting up in his seat. At this moment, I opened my door. The car all, almost reached my left side, at the, so not his, in his lane at my lane, mm -hmm. at the left side where the car should to go at the left if someone want to park next before he go at the traffic sign. And I opened the door and I asked the police, what, what can I do? What, what should I do? Like, and he told me, just push the radio. Mm. Uh, and because I'm confusing, I, I want to take his radio, but he was, he told me the other one without, mm -hmm. he, he, can't, he can't move his hand. You're right, right. And because he was wounded. So they wanted help. Yeah, they, talking on the yeah, radio. Talking on the radio. So, and, but he can't push the radio by himself. And right. when I push the radio, he start to call for help. I don't remember exactly what the word he said. Yeah. Mm. And he asked me to leave the radio, so he make sure they respond. And. During that moment when he was calling for help, all his expression about his friend. Yeah. Because he, he felt like his friend need help more than him. You, you obviously were, were just reacting at, at that moment to, to what you had just ex experienced. Were, were you 
yourself frightened by all of this? I was worried about the shooter to return back and, uh, and shoot at us again. Right. And mm -hmm. At this moment, I, I felt like they are under my ter territory, so I will not leave them, even if the shooter come back. Uh, and thank the God, the, poli the other police officer, when they came, they haven't talked that much, so they cut all of the thinking. Uh, what? Uh, well, I, I, I can't imagine that. I mean, how long have you have you been a, a cab driver? Yes, uh, five months since August. Oh, okay, so you haven't actually been been a cab driver that long. And and from what I understand, and tell me if I'm wrong about this. It is your aspiration to be a police officer? Is that, is that, is that your goal? Do you want to become a police officer? Mm, I, I wasn't think about it, but maybe I will take it in, like, in my consideration in the future. But because I'm like, I felt I'm old, 33, 34, um, was it in my consideration? I thought I should be 18 up to 22 to be like physically good for this job mm. but maybe now in the future maybe i think about it yeah. i don't know yeah well so obviously this has had quite an impact on your life and and obviously on the life of the surviving officer because without you being there at the time that you to were he may yeah. not have made it himself uh, karam thank you so much for for coming in thank um, you for your courage and i i know thank it was you. a very difficult moment but you reacted uh, um, uh, and responded the way that uh, i think anyone would want I'm, Someone very, to glad. Respond. I'm yeah. very glad to, to have this chance and help those people who mm -hmm. risk themselves and risk their life. To well, thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you so it's a much. It's pleasure meeting you. And what a story. Justin Chong.